And uh, Mike Jensen, president of NCC, Northwest Community Communications, the phone company and the Avery Cable System. And uh, behind us, 100%. Uh, make, let, let me make that 99%. We still have a few coins to gather for, <laughs> for a few pieces of equipment. No, really, just joking around. And now we're set to go as uh, the big guy, Scott the House Jensen, will step in against number 44, Arnold Lamb, the 6'3 junior for Durand. The referee puts it in the air. The tip controlled by Jensen. It's been that way most of the season. Picked out of there by uh, Brooks. will give it off to Wilhelm across on the near side for Embry. Right. Front and court action for the Warriors. They come near side. That is Ginter out on top, Coppinger, right side of the key. He'll make a drive down the right side of the lane, bounce to the big guy on the baseline, spin around, jump shot on the way, good, and quite in contrast to the way we started Tuesday night. Let's hope it continues that way, Bill. Definitely so. So with that, Amory leads a two to nothing, and it's Kyle Hagnes, a 5'11 junior, bringing it across. He runs into a trap put on by Amory, gives off on the right side to Richardson, and they come near side now to Arno Lamb, the man who did the jumping against Jensen. He is listed at a 6'3 junior forward. Out on top, they go right side to Hagnes again. The ball tipped out of bounds on the far side. It'll be Duran basketball from across the way. The Warriors really hustling here so far on defense. That uh, looking going off and here too for the opening trip down the floor. Let's hope that continues. Oh, I think that opening basket was really uh, is going to be proved to be a big builder here. I think it's just going to put them on track here. We'll have to wait and see, but uh, that, that's my uh, thinking and feeling right now. And as I mentioned, that the inbound pass goes to the far side. They go down low. And they tried to give off on the inside as Dave Hall came scrambling down the lane. Taken away by Amory, a throw into the front court. They hit Brutzo. He puts one up off glass from the right side. It's good, and he also draws the foul. So Amory on top quickly, 4 to nothing. The foul will be called on Kyle Hagnes, 5'11", junior. And Brutzo, who had 20 points against the Spooner, Tuesday night will step up in trying to make a three this evening. Warriors once again doing a good job there in that lead pass and throwing the long pass down the floor to get the easy bucket. As you mentioned that, Ray, the free throw is missed. The rebound comes down to the uh, Durant Panthers. They bring her down quickly. Out high on the left side, it's Hagnes. Hagnes dribbles across the key, goes right side. That is Hall, the sophomore. And out on top now to Richardson. Jamie comes near side to Lamb. Lamb holds on against Ginter. Now out on top, they go to Hagnes. He splits the defense, goes to the right side, down to the baseline, and puts up a seven-footer. That goes through. So Hagnes gets the first points in the ball game for the Durand Panthers. Now they can come out with some full-court pressure as Amory trying to bring it across here after that basket by Hagnes. Jensen whips her into the front court, finds Brooks along the near side. He missed Ginter all by himself down low. Goes left side to Wilhelm. Three-point attempt on the way is missed. Rebound, muscle away. Well, let's see. It is Wilhelm who ends up with it. Trying to go down low, finds the big guy. Jensen scoots inside, takes it off the glass, and it's good. It's getting the Warriors doing a good job here, working the ball around, trying to find an open man. Well, they're working hard down there, and as I mentioned that, the Panthers bring her down quickly, and a shot blocked on the near side as number 24, Jason Weisenbeck, their star, their offensive machine, went to the near side baseline, tried a shot blocked by Ginter out of bounds to the Panthers on the baseline. Six to two, Amory by four, just underway in the first quarter. Middle Border Conference High School Boys Basketball. Bill Hagen along with Ray Norstead, and Mike Jensen will be joining us. Front court action for the Panthers. As they go around the horn with it, we've got some shoving going on down low, and a foul called on, let's see, is it number 40? I believe so. That would be Dave Hall, the six-foot-three sophomore, trying to get some room. Trying to push off against the house underneath the basket that time. Well, the, the Sporta Rails got called for that a couple of times Tuesday night as well. Amory breaks the press, brings it across on the left side. Coppinger doing so. Gives off to Wilhelm to the top of the key right side. The Brooksville so three-point range. Puts the shot on the way. No good rebound. Tipped out. Now wrestled or fought for. And Coppinger ends up with it. Whips her down low. The big guy there puts it off the glass. No good rebound. Chased down in the near corner and picked away by Weisenbeck. Weisenbeck will give off to Hagnes. Picked up by Wilhelm in the backcourt. Stops him on the dribble now. Splits the defense. Brings it across. Goes in the lane. Dishes down low. Shot put up. It is no good. Rebound tipped up. And it goes through by Arno Lamb. He gets his first two. Nice follow that time by Lamb. He went right high and put it right back up without uh, coming back down with it. Good aggressive basketball by the Durant Panther. And as we mentioned that, Amory throws it away. The big guy trying to go into the front court. It's still in the way by Lamb. And as the Panthers bring it across, traveling called inside. It'll be Amory getting the basketball back. And they hold on to the two-point lead. 
Six to four, our score, if by chance you just tuned in. Inbound pass from Jensen goes to Gabe Rochelle. Six foot three, senior in the backcourt. Pulls up on the dribble, has the ball tipped. It'll go out of bounds on the baseline, and Amber will get another 10 seconds. Smart move on the big guy to let her go. Scott Jensen let it go to the baseline. Went out of bounds, and now Amory will get another 10 seconds here. Inbound pass goes to Coppinger. Maybe to get another 10, being it's tipped anyway, I'm not sure. But some good passing brings it across on the near side as Jensen went to Wilhelm in the circle to the near side to Brutzel. Now on top, Coppinger splits the defense, gets in the lane, trying to shot no good, but a foul coming. It should be called against Hall. Let's wait and see. If so, that's number two. That could be awful crucial for Duran. There's two falls on their big man right off the bat here. It's a shooting violation. That will send Coppinger to the line. Matt, a six-foot one junior, will step in for the first time tonight. And the first substitution for the Duran Panthers as number 50. That is Dennis Smith, a six-foot-two sophomore, is in there now. So Coppinger at the line. The first one is on the way, and it is good. So the junior gives Amory a three-point lead here with 4.38 to go in the first quarter. Coppinger to try it again. Taking his time, bouncing the ball a couple of times. Now here's a shot on the way. It is short. Rebound tipped out, pulled away by, the, by Weisenbeck for the Duran Panthers. So the Panthers on offense down by three, seven to four. Wilhelm on Hagnes out high on the right side with the dribble. Now gets up on the right side. Here's a drive down the corner. A shot up and no good. Rebound loose in the lane. Picked away by Brozo. He'll bring it across on the near side all the way down. Goes down. Got the avenue. Put it up off the glass and it's good. Hagnus let him go. And Brozo gets the two. Give him four in the evening. It's now nine to four. Amory by five. Nice drive that time by Gabe. Taking her coast to coast. So to speak. Put her in. Definitely so. Hagnus will bring it across now for the Panthers. After the score, Bob Brochel. He goes to the right side of the key. Almost walk. Goes down low. Finds Smith. His shot up no good. Gets his own rebound. Lost and picked up by Weisenbeck. Weisenbeck on the near side. Will go for two. Long set shot. No good rebound. Tipped around. Fought for Coppinger. Coppinger for the Warriors. Springs it across on the left side. He's fouled before he can get much further. And we'll have a Amory possession from the far side. Have they called Smith? Yes, Number Dennis 50. Smith has called for the first time. So Coppinger will throw it in from across the way. It goes to Brutzel. Gabe Brutzel for the Amory Warriors, top of the key now with the basketball. Coming near side, that is Coppinger. And Coppinger holds on, guarded on the near side by Richardson. Drove down to the baseline, tried the shot, partially blocked, picked out of there by... Richardson given off to Hagnes, and Hagnes across on the right side. Comes to the near side. That's Arno Lamb, the six foot three sophomore. Given off now to Weisenbeck. Still with the basketball guarded closely by Brutzel. Almost knocked out of there. And they tried to go inside to the big guy, Dennis Smith. The ball tipped by Scott the House Jensen, but they call him for coming over, and he picks up number one. Well, Scott uh, did a good job there, I think, of trying to knock the ball away, but he had to put his hand on him to try and lean over, and uh, they call him for putting his hand on his back. I believe it was a good call. It, I think you could hear it a little yeah. bit up here. <laughs> and as we mentioned that now, Maya Fredrickson and Matt Lindy have checked in for the Amory Warriors. Inbound pass comes near side to Weisenbeck. Three-point attempt missed completely. And on the rebound, somebody really goes scrambling in. And a call down low may go against Jake Ginter, number 54 of Amory. That's an interesting call. The guy came over the top of him, and <laughs> Jake got the ball. I, Boy, I don't came agree over, with that one. I believe he came over the top of two of them. Yep. And uh, as it is, the Panthers will throw it in from the baseline. Goes far side, out on top. That is Jamie Richardson. Down to the far corner. Weisenbeck will try it for three. Bounces off the rim. No good rebound held by Maya Fredrickson. Given off to Lindy. He races into the front court near side. Finds Brooksen. Down to the baseline he goes. Tries it off the glass. That's good. And that's the type of shot Steve Well was talking about last Tuesday night. He wants Brooksen to go high on that backboard once in a while. And this time it works. It's now 11-4, Amory. Hagnes brings it across, goes right side to Richardson. Three-point attempt from way out, no good. Rebound bounces back to him. He drives down low, jump shot off the glass. It's good, and a nice shot by Jamie Richardson. It's now 11-8, Amory by three. Full court pressure by the Panthers. And the big guy, Jensen, whips her into the front court. He goes to Ginter, inside to Brutzel, coming down the lane. Nice play by Amory. Brutzel now with eight points after the score. Absolutely. You made just an excellent job of breaking their press and getting the easy bucket. Coppinger getting ready to come back in. 
The Panthers in the front court. Emery leading 13 to 6. A steal by Brozel. He's got Lindy. Bounce pass down low. He goes back to Brozel. Left handed shot off the glass is good. And we've got a timeout coming. Emery leads at 15 6. We're back in one minute. Well, after the timeout called by the Durant Panthers, Michael Blair wanted to talk things over as he saw Emery uh, really pumped up here. At 15 to 6, as the Panthers, Hagnes brings it across, goes to Richardson, almost a steal by Coppinger back in there. Richardson down low, tries to feed inside. We've got a whistle and a call. It could be Maya Fredrickson as they went to Arnold Lamb down on the baseline, right? Call Maya Fredrickson the first time tonight. The Panthers will have it from the baseline as Amory picks up foul number three. Kyle Hagnes will throw it in. Inbound pass high to Richardson. Right side of the lane. He tried it off the glass. No good. Nice try. Rebound to the big guy. House into the... Best rebound is tipped and chased down by Lindy in the far corner. Amory's basketball to Coppinger. He goes inside. Tried the shot. It's going to be good. And he draws the foul. Coppinger has three and a chance to make it four. The foul to Jamie Richardson. That would be his first. And Brozel coming out for a well-deserved rest as Wilhelm back in there. Ginter back in there. He was out momentarily, and the house coming out for a rest. To go in the first quarter. The six foot one junior steps in. Here is the shot. It is off the front of the rim. The rebound fought for and pulled away by Arnold Lamb. The Panthers bring it across. Find Richardson far side. He goes around no good rebound to Coppinger Coppinger brings it across on the near side gives off to Fredrickson he'll pull up and try one from the near side no good but some shoving down low it's going to go against the Panthers and it looks like it's going to be Kyle Hagnes with the five for the let's wait and see wow it's Jamie Richardson once again number 32 the sixth team foul on the Durant Panthers. Fredrickson at the line. Free throw is good. Maya scores for the first time tonight. And if they'd give us programs that had the right numbers on them, Jensen and I could try to read these for you and help you out. I know it. later on we'll get those squared away. Fredrickson to try it again. The shot is on the way. This one is good as well. So he hits them both. It's now 19 to 6. Amory with. And a steal by Lindy in the backcourt. Given off to Wilhelm. Back to Lindy. Take away by Hagnes. They tried to give and go. And into the front court they come. Hagnes is caught from behind by Matt Lindy. And there's the first time that something really good went awry for Ambry. And the Panthers will take advantage. The Warriors have really uh, come out of the shoot, so to speak, here tonight. And they're doing an excellent job. And uh, they're playing the type of basketball that we saw them play here earlier on before Christmas. And they're really doing an excellent job. Definitely so. And as you mentioned, that the inbound pass to Hagnes going right side. Number 42 in there for the first time tonight. That is Jeremy Bruner. And they come to the near side. Also in there, number 22 is Jesse Coughlin. As the ball is tipped out of bounds, on the near side, the Panthers will throw it in from on the near side. Inbound pass goes to Bruner. Or check that, not Bruner, but Lamb. Down on top, they go to Hagnes. Hagnes dribbles to the right side, picked up by Lindy. 30 seconds to go, and over and back. Over yeah. and back as the defense worked. Hagnes got tied up with the trap on the far side over there. As Weisenbeck will come back in, and Hagnes will get a well-deserved rest. Maya Fredrickson will throw it in from across the way. It goes to Matt Lindy. And he brings it across very slowly. Picked up by Weisenbeck. They'll go for one shot. Looking down low, just gets it to Fredrickson. On top of Coppinger, top of the key. Dives down the lane, had a shot. He'll take it off the glass. No good rebound, pulled down on the inside. Arnold Lamb doing a good job that time on the rebound. And the Panthers now, with five seconds, will get a chance to close out the quarter. From the near side, a shot taken and no good. The rebound shot put up and no good. And our first quarter score, the Avery Warriors 19, the Durant Panthers 6. We're back in one minute. At 10 over 1, Bill Hag along with Jerry Norstead. And Mike Jensen will be joining us at halftime as the Durant Panthers will throw it in from across the way. Inbound pass. Almost taken away by Brooksell. Out on top, they go to Weisenbeck. Near side to Lamb. Down low on the near side. 
That is Matt Bruner. Out on top, right side. That is Bruner. Down to the corner. Lamb, they're really taking their time. Lamb goes down the baseline. Tried the shot on the good rebound easily to Smith. He tried it no good, but a foul on the rebound. And let's see what's going to be called against. Maybe Coppinger or is it somebody bigger inside? I missed it. Coppinger is the call. So Matt picks up number one. And with 7.35 to go in the first half, Amory leading 19-6. to At the line, the first one is put through. So now it's 19-7. to Bruner hitting the first one. The second one is on the way and missed. The rebound tipped into the hands of Brusso. And Brusso into the front court for the Amory Warriors with a big lead. Out on top to go to Wilhelm. Coming to the near side, got a screen for the big guy. Tried to get down a low, and we've got a foul in the lane. A one-and-one -one situation coming up here. And the foul is called on Smith. That would be his second. Marcus Wilhelm will step to the line for the first time tonight. He'll be shooting one-and-one. -one. If by chance you just tuned it in, 19 to 7, aim relating over Duran. The free throw by Wilhelm is good. <laughs> Wilhelm to try it again. The shot is on the way, it is good. Well, if there's anything Marcus can do, he'll give him time from the outside. He'll, he'll hit the three, but he can certainly shoot free throws. And as I mentioned that, the Panthers bring it down. Amory leading. And a steal by Brooks. And he'll take it all the way. And he lays it up there and lands hard but got the two points. Boy, you hate to see that. He did not land real good. He was looking up to see if it was going through or not and forgot about his feet. But he made it. And it's 23-7. to seven. The Panthers down quickly. On the near side. That is Jesse Coughlin. They go to the left side to try to shot. No good rebound. Pulled down by Bruner. Out on top, they go to Weisenbeck. Near side to Lamb. Guarded by Brooksho. Given off to Coughlin. Jesse with the basketball. Guarded very closely by Ginter. He forces a turnover. As Ginter steals or check that, it was Coughlin who stole it away. And the traveling called on Coughlin as he pulled up in the lane and tried to go to the near side. So Emory stole it away. And they call a turnover on Amory traveling as we came down quickly. And so now the Panthers get her back. Inbound pass to Claflin across the near side. Half court pass to Lamb. Right side to Weisenbeck. Into the far corner. Richardson back in there. Out on top. That is Weisenbeck. Right side to Richardson. Down the baseline he comes. He'll try it. It is missed. Unbelievable. Rebound comes down to Brozzo. Gabe into the front court with a right-handed dribble. Right side of the key goes down the baseline to Coppinger. His jump shot up and no good, but a foul called on Richardson. Tough break for the Durant Panthers as Jamie Richardson, is, uh, Richardson has been called for the third time. Well, now we've got a technical called on Michael Blair, the, the coach for the Durant Panthers. He did not like the call, and I'm sure he's frustrated over the fact that one of his consistent players is... Uh, Jay Richardson picking up number three. Apparently, maybe I missed something. I don't know. Let's go to Mike Jensen. Mike, uh, what happened? Did I miss something or not? I don't think I'm live here. Okay, I think he got the, the Mike Blair, the Durant coach, just got two technicals. He whistled one, and then he went again and went like this. And that's what he was over there talking about, giving the coach two technicals. Well, get to wait and see. Okay, uh, Jake Ginter is at the line, by the way. He made the first one. The second one is on the way. That is good. And now somebody else will step in. So it was two technicals called on Coach Mike Blair. And now Wilhelm will step in. But he's shooting too, so that's that's the shot foul. No, the shot foul was on Ginter. The foul that occurred was on Ginter. He gets two shots for that. Wilhelm shooting the, the technicals at this point. Okay. Well, whatever. He makes the first one and misses the second one. So he is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, this doesn't happen every day, so a uh, person has to get refreshed. Now he has to shoot two more. Well, they have a the line. So he makes this one, so he's four out of five on the line. And Amory adding to that lead. They lead by 20 points now, 27 7. And the uh, second one by Wilhelm is good again. So he makes three out of four this time. He is five out of six. Uh, Ginter made two prior to that. 
And now Ambry with a big lead of 21 points, 28 to 7. And they also will get the basketball. Coppinger will throw it in from across the way. Goes to Brutzel. He'll bring it across. Gives off to Wilhelm. Wilhelm picks up a screen from Brutzel. Can do nothing with it. Runs into a trap and gives off to Brutzel. Down the lane. Blocked nicely by Lamb. But a foul called in there. And Lamb has kind of burned himself here. Arno picks up number one. Well... He got a little dramatic with that, uh, that attempted block, and I think he would have had it if he uh, played it a little cooler, but he did not, and that's Brooks are going to the line. Well, I think he did definitely got him with the body a little bit there, too. Uh, he made a block the ball pretty cleanly, but he hit him with the body in the process. But I don't think the call was made if he, if he doesn't. Uh, yeah, it, was, it was a hostile block, if you will, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Arnold Lamb. It's a frustrating situation for the Durant Panthers at this moment. They're down 28 to 7. The first one by Brooklyn missed, by the way. And the second one is good. So Brooklyn now with 13 points and I'm going to score 29 to 7. Avery by that much. The Panthers bring it across and they lose it. A ball tipped by Brooklyn, picked up by Maya Fredrickson back in there. Given off to Matt Lindy back in there. And he brings it across on the near side. Picked up by Coughlin. Claflin gives off, or check that, is Lindy giving off that Fredrickson on the near side, looking at the big guy, gets it down low, and he's going to be called for traveling. Well, a good play on the defense that time, as Dave Hall just kind of backed away, and uh, Jensen, I think, was anticipating some contact. It was not there, and maybe he didn't do anything at all. I don't know, but the referee laid right down low just made the call. Well, he definitely took an extra little shuffle step in there. He was trying to do, do something with the ball, and... Uh, Traveled in the process. Here we go. As we mentioned that, uh, Jamie Richardson comes down the right side, goes all the way down underneath, and he's fouled by Ginter on the far side. <laughs> so the 16th foul on Embury, and the Durant Panthers will have it from the baseline. It goes out to the right side. Jesse Coughlin prizes it for three, and it is good. And finally, something to cheer about for the Durant Panthers as Jesse hits for the first time tonight. All right, Brooksel into the front court after the score by the Panthers. He goes to Fredrickson, left side of the key, picked up by Richardson. Now on top, Lindy, jump shot from the free throw line, no good rebound, pulled down by the Panthers. It is Weisenbeck who comes away with it. Gives off to Richardson, back to Weisenbeck. Jason whips her into the front court to Richardson, down to the far corner. Cut off there by Ginter, whips it out on top. Top of the key it is Weisenbeck, steps to the line, tried the jump shot, good, he's fouled. A chance for a three-point play. Well, Matt Lindy that time to get the fall, and he just uh, tried to catch up with him from the backside and got him a little over the back. Weisenbeck, their leading scorer, just scored for the first time. But as you mentioned, and Matt Lindy has picked up foul number two, and Weisenbeck stepping in trying for the three-point play. The shot is on the way, and it is good. So he capitalizes on the situation. And now we're looking at a 29 to 13 score. Amory in front with 4.48 to go first half. Lindy across on the near side, picked up by Jesse Clefton. Given off to Ginter in the free throw line or near there. Alley oops down low to the big guy. Got by him. Cut break. Just a little bit more. And Scott the House Jensen is there, but he cannot handle the pass. Tipped by one of the Panthers and out of bounds to the Grand Panthers. Weisenbeck will bring it across after the inbound pass. Goes to Richardson right side. Picked up. Rolls it down low and it got it by everybody. Apparently kicked or tipped by one of the Amory Warriors and it'll be Panther basketball from under their own hoop. Yeah. One situation I didn't see. It looked to me like uh, maybe it's going after a Panther, but must have been the Warriors. As we mentioned, an inbound pass to Richardson. Out on top, they go to Claflin to Richardson right side. Guarded by Ginder. Now dribble drive to the baseline. Cut it off by Lindy. And they have, he'll have to go out on top, and they call it for traveling as he tries to clear it out to Dave Hall. So a turnover there on the Panthers, and Amory will get it back with 4.20 to go in the first half. Inbound pass goes to Matt Lindy. And Lindy across on the left side for the Amory Warriors, picked up by Claflin immediately. And he loses the ball. Picked up by Richardson, and we've got a foul before Richardson can get going. He'll be going to the line, shooting one and one. Maya Fredrickson called for the second time. A little situation, I tell you, when you lose the ball or something happens and you try to get it back in the quick fall right there, and uh, Maya was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Jamie Richardson stepping in, three fouls, which brought Mike Blair off the bench earlier, and he was called for two technicals. 
And the free throw on the way is off the back of the rim, goes up high and falls down through. So Richardson now with three points in the contest. And I don't really think that's Michael Blair at all. I, I think he just got caught off guard here tonight. Yeah, I think you're probably right there, too. Uh, Looks like a pretty calm fellow here to come in. He just didn't like that call. Richardson at the line will try it again, and it is good. So he hits them both, and the Panthers try to scrape their way back into this one. It's 29-15. Amory led by 21 at one point. Now it's a 14-point contest. Well, he'll come across on the left side for the Amory Warriors. Goes to the house at the left post. One dribble, and they call for traveling again. So a turnover there, and the Panthers with another chance to to uh, whittle away at that lead. Clapham will throw it in, and it goes to Richardson. He'll bring it across on the right side, chased down by Wilhelm. Comes to Clapham on the near side. Across the lane they go to Weisenbeck, and he'll finally get room to take a shot. It's no good. Rebound tipped around, fought for, and loose underneath. It's a pick up and put up, and no good. Getting the foul down, though, and it could be Fredrickson again. I think it's going to be... Once again, uh, there was a lot more fouls than, than that one, but uh, Maya might have got something in there, too. Well, it's number three on Maya Fredrickson, and Richardson will be going to the free throw line once again. And number 12, by the way, Dreyer is in there. The Dino Dreyer is in there for the first time for the Duran Panthers, number 12. Richardson making the first one, so three in a row. Or check that, not three in a row. The second one is missed, the first one made, and it is Wilhelm who brings it across with a 29-18 score, and we're leading with 329 in the first half. Here is Brooks along the near side, picked up by Weisenbeck. This is on an eight to Fredrickson, back out on top of Wilhelm. He goes to the lane, has the ball stripped, and a jump ball called, and it'll be Durant basketball. Well, there's a chance where Marcus had a chance to go for a three, I believe. And then saw an opening in the lane, and elected to go down against the big guys and had the shot blocked. It is Amory's basketball. Goes to Brooks. Still three-point attempt from the corner. No good rebound. Cap here on the near side. Goes right back down low. Throws it out on top to Marcus, looking at the big guy. But holds on right side of the key against Clapton. One dribble. Now has to go someplace. Bounce has to Fredericks at the post. Right side, out on top, they go to Brooksville. Gabe holds on against Weisenbeck. One dribble now, too, as he works his way toward the near side. Now we'll look at a dribble drive. Gives off to Fredrickson, coming out of the lane, looking inside. Gives to the post. It is the big guy, Jensen, with a shot off the glass. No good rebound. Brooksville puts it up to far about it too long. The rebound on Brooksville. Took it away from Weisenbeck. Gets a screen, brings it out high. Goes to Wilhelm, far side. Against Clapton, drives in the lane. Goes to Fredericks, and he walks with the basketball. He wanted to go for the three. But just couldn't believe he was that open. And there's the turnover. I think that's the one they all look for. The top of the key, and absolutely wide open. Nobody around there, and he just tried to get his feet set and uh, traveled in the process. 29-16 on our score as Richardson comes out and goes all the way around on an 80 puts loose and puts her up for two. And Richardson now with six points. It is 29-18. As Wilhelm brings it across, stops at the top of the key. Clapton on him. Goes left side to Brotzel. Brotzel now to Fredrickson down low. There's Coppinger. Fakes goes around the defense, puts it up off the glass. Good. Nice play by Coppinger. 31 to 16. He picked that 31 and 18. Amory with the 13 point lead. The Panthers in the front court. Lamp goes right side to Weisenbeck to Richardson. Far quarter. Back to Weisenbeck. Now to Dry. Tried to get around the defense. A foul called on Gabe Brutzel. That'll be number one on Brutzel. And Dreyer will go to the line for the first time tonight. Or is it? Yes, it's uh, it's Daniel Dreyer. <laughs> Well, let's see. Ginter will come back in, and Maya Fredericks has all come out of there with a minute 48 to go to close out the first half. Well, the Warriors uh, slow down a little bit here at the, uh, in the second quarter, but uh, hopefully they're going to pick up the piece just before the end of the quarter. You wait and see before the end of the half, rather. Well, at the line, Dreyer sent the first one on the way, and it's good. The second one is on the way. This one good as well. So give him two. And it's now 31-20. Amory's late cut to 11. 
Well, Gabe Brooks will take a look at the bench now as he brings it across at midcourt. Picked up by Jason Weisenbeck. Gives off to Wilhelm near corner. Inside to go the big guy. Gets it. Just tried to shot. Missed rebound. Coppinger. And Coppinger going over the top. Is did he commit the foul? Apparently. Let's wait and see. Yes, the foul is called on Coppinger. That's number two on him as he tried to get the rebound. And actually went climbing on the backs of a few. It'll be Richards going to the line with a minute and 33 to go on the half. Well, they're coming back from the free throw line. They're stopping the clock and making some points at the free throw line here, trying to whittle away at that lead. That's too bad that particular trip down there. We didn't get a basket. Had a couple chances. Richardson now making the first one. And I have him for seven. He may have more than that. I may have got uh, my scorebook turned around with Weisenbeck and Richardson. We'll have to check it at halftime. Second one missed. Rebound of the house. But Amory's basketball. I'm at a 29 to go. First half. 31-21. It's a 10-point game. Will help. Runs into a trap. Throws it to the far side to Brozo. Nice pass. A nice... Uh, Action getting out of that one by Wilhelm. They go to Coppinger down low, get it there, and he's boxed out. I should say boxed out. He's moved out by Richardson. And uh, so Jamie will pick up number four, and that's a tough break now for the Grand Panthers. They need this kid. And that's number four on Jamie Richardson already. Boy, I think Coach Mike Hall would rather had or given up the two points. Rebound after the missed shot from the free throw line by Ginter, pulled away by Clapton. He took it away. Gives on to Weisenbeck. He'll bring it across on the near side, picked up by Brozo. Weisenbeck goes inside to Lamb. Lamb shot put up. It is good. Arno Lamb scores for the second time. Give him four. And it's now 31-23, an eight-point game. Well, Helm brings it across for the Emory Warriors. Stops the key, comes near side to Coppinger, moving toward the lane, cut off there. Out on top, they go to Brozo. Brozo, guarded by Weisenbeck. One dribble, dishes down low. There's Coppinger to try to bounce pass into the big guy. A scramble for it on the floor. It'll be Amory's basketball after it goes out of bounds off the hands of Arnold Lamb. So fortunately, the Warriors get the ball out of bounds. They could have called a cross body block. That was a good one. <laughs> No on that one. Something happened down it's there. It's getting a little rough out here, I'm trying to tell you folks. <laughs> on the inbound pass, they tried to go to Brozo, and Weisenbeck gets a hand in there and hacks Brozo. So Jason will pick up foul number one. And with 35 seconds to go, Brozo was a step to the line. Well, he had 10 in the first quarter, three here in period number two, and a chance to add to that now from the free throw line. The free throw is on the way off the back of the rim. Rebound tipped out, pulled away by Hagnes back in there. He races down the right side. This is off the Claflin. Fade away jump shot from the baseline. It's good, and it's getting real interesting now. Claflin scores again, give him five, and our score is 31-25. The Grand Panthers have cut it to six points. And as we mentioned that, a whistle and apparently a foul call on somebody down low for the Amory Warriors could be the big guy. It is. Scott the House Jensen called. That would be his second. And that will bring the ball down to the other end of the court. And I think we have a lot of Amory fans here looking on in disbelief that a 21-point lead has been cut to six. And if number 44, Arnold Lamb, can do further damage, uh, we might be looking at a four-point game. The free throw off the back of the rim, no good, and the house comes down with a rebound. Into the front court to Ginter. Brozo near side. Between his legs with the dribble goes to Wilhelm. He fakes, now will try it from three, way out, no good. Rebound chased down near side. Weisenbeck, time runs out. And our first half score, the Avery Warriors 31. The Durant Panthers 25, back to talk about it after this two minutes. We'll throw from across the way when they get everybody back into the bleachers. All the uh, student body and the uh, younger student body across the way. And it'll be Jesse Claflin to throw it in. Goes to Kyle Hagnes across on the near side as the third quarter begins. The Panthers with the basketball. It is Hagnes coming near side to Weisenbeck. Weisenbeck against Wilhelm. Moves to the lane. Tried the shot. No good. Rebound pulled out. No good. And the rebound comes down to Ginter. Dave Hall tried it in the lane. It was no good on the second shot. 
All right, let's see if Amory can capitalize now as Wilhelm goes to the right side. Guarded closely by Hagnes. Goes down low to get to try the shot. No good, but a foul called on either Hall or number 44, Arnold Lamb. It should be Lamb, I would think, and that is it the is. call. Number okay, two. I didn't that time, though. <laughs> well, Jake Ginter went to the line on the technical, so here he has it to the line again, and this one is good. So Ginter now with three points in the contest, all from the free throw line, and Amory now leads at 32-25. Second one is on the way, this one is good as well. So two big free throws, and Amory gets the first points in the second half. Inbound pass to Weisenbeck. Out on top they go to Hagnes. Drives into the front court before he gets there. We've got a body check on Marcus Wilhelm. And so Marcus will pick up number one. Quickly for you. Wilhelm with five in that first half. Brooks with 13. Coppinger five. Ginter two. Jensen four. And Fredrickson off the bench with two. We'll get the Panthers in a moment. Action underway. Front court for the Grand Panthers. They play catch on the near side, Clapham and Hagnes. Hagnes goes to Clapham, wanted to go for three, back out on top. Inside they go. And a shot blocked by the house. Wow, nice. Nice blocked by the house as Arnold Lamb went up for a close one. No good, but they will send him to the line. He'll be shooting a couple. Well, wait a minute. It's Ginter, not Scott Jensen, but Ginter called for the foul. Must have bumped him before he went up. That's number three on Jake Ginter. Step in, and he'll be shooting a couple. On the lamb, and the fifth throw on the way is off the back of the rim and no good. So the six foot three junior misses for the second time tonight. He's 0 for 2, and two points on the evening. The second one is identical. No good. The rebound comes down hard to Gabe Brutzo, and Amor back on offense as Brutzo brings it across, goes to the right side. Picked up by Weisenbeck. Out on top to go to Coppinger. Claflin guarding him. Near side to Ginter. Down to the baseline. Got the avenue. Scoots down low. Tied it off the glass. And it's good. Nice drive by Jake that time. We need to get him back in the ballgame here. That three or four points he's got so far. He needs to add to that a little area. He has six points now after that basket down low. And Hagnes drops into the front court on the near side. The trap put on. He goes to Weisenbeck. Three-point attempt from the top of the key. No good rebound. Chase down by Coppinger before he gets loose. A foul on Weisenbeck. Well, a tough break for Jason Weisenbeck that time. Purely not intentional. He was just trying to get out of the way, but his arm caught Coppinger. So a foul call there, and Amory will have it from the near side. 6.36 to go in the third quarter. Amory leading by 10, 35, 25. It was a six-point game at halftime. Here's the Amory Warriors. They go to the right side. Wilhelm with a beautiful feed to Scott the house. Jensen, he took it in off the glass. It's good, or was it a turnaround? Whatever, he got the two. And it's now 37-25. Amory moves out to a 12-point lead. And as the Panthers try to bring it across, backcourt pressure turns or causes a turnover on the far side. And Amory will throw it in from across the way as Dreyer will come back in and Arnold Lamb will come out of there. Well, Coach Mike Blair will have a few words for Arnold and try to get him settled down here. Bringing the ball down the court. Wilhelm with the inbound pass. Stops out high on the right side. Out on top he goes to Coppinger. Alley hoops down low to the big guy before he gets to make the shot. No good, but a foul. And the big guy will be going to the line. Hall is called down low. That would be number three on the six foot three sophomore center. And Amory will slip it in from the baseline. He was fouled before he got the shot off. Here's a feed into Jensen. They tried to turn around off the glass. No good. The rebound comes down to the drive. Give it up to Kyle Hagnes. Hagnes brings across on the near side. Picked up by Wilhelm. Goes down to the corner. Knocked out of bounds by Weisenbeck. It was Ginter who stuck a hand in there. Got mixed up. The office fingers and out of bounds on the near corner. Amory's basketball. 37-25 for the 12-point lead for Amory as Wilhelm brings it across on the near side. Picked up by Hagnes. Goes to the top of the key, that's Jensen. And now we've got some shoving going on down low. Looks like it could be Ginter. And the Panthers will get the basketball back as Jake Ginter picks up number four. And now we're even Steven. Richardson is on the bench for the 
Duane Panthers with four fouls, and now one of our big guys down low, Jake Ginter, has picked up his fourth. 5.38 to go third quarter. Inbound pass goes to Weisenbeck. To Dreyer. Back to Jason Weisenbeck against Brochel. The trap put on. He's trying to dribble around it. Whips her into the front court to Coughlin. He drives the baseline. Got caught underneath. Lost control. Picked away by the house. Into the front court to Fredrickson on the near side. Pulls up. Goes to Coppinger. Baseline shot coming. No. A foul goes on Weisenbeck. And that will be his third. Well, tough break for the Panthers, and, uh, but I don't know. We might get the two points by Coppinger if the whistle doesn't blow. Still 37-25. Amory from the baseline. Inbound pass goes to Brooks Hill. Guarded by Jason Weisenbeck. Dribbles out of there. Still with the basketball. Now goes on top to Wilhelm. Hagnes all over him. To Brooks Hill on the near side. Three-point attempt on the way is Hagnes. Rebound. The house coming over the top of Hall. And the house will pick up foul number three. Uh, quite a few fellas here getting in serious foul trouble here all of a sudden. Definitely. Yeah, I was just going to say it's it's uh, consistent. And the trap put on Weisbeck, and he called, he called timeout, I believe. So, yes, he calls timeout near the corner. 37-25 as they tuck things over. Amber leads by 12. We're back in one minute. Black people tell me it's just like a football game out there. Now back to Bill Haig and the Amory boys basketball game. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. The Panthers bring it down after the timeout. Claflin drives into the lane. Does not get the two points off the glass, but a foul call down low. Is it the big guy? If so, that is number four. Let's take a look. Yes, number four on Scott the House Jensen. You'll have to come out of there. And Matt Lady coming back in. So now Amory has the two big guys in foul trouble with a lot of time left in this basketball game. Jesse Claflin will step in. He'll be shooting a couple. Free throw on the way is good. So Claflin gets the first points in the second half for the Duran Panthers. It's now 37-28. Check that, 37-26. The second one missed. Rebound taken away by Brutzel. Amory into the front court. Marcus Wilhelm. Given off to Lindy. Matt with the basketball comes near side for Brochel. He'll dribble a couple of times, rips it to the right side. Wilhelm left alone, tries it for three. It's going to go through. Wilhelm hits for three on the right side. Give him eight points, a big, big momentum builder for Amory. And now we're leading 40 to 26, a 14 point game. Full court pressure by the Amory Warriors. Weisenbeck whips her into the front court to. Dreyer, he gets it across, had the ball slapped by Lindy, picked up by Hagnes, good ball control, goes down to the baseline, tried the shot, no good, Lindy called for the foul. Well, let's take a look now. That's number three on Matt Lindy. And Dreyer will be going, check that Hagnes will be going to the free throw line. 4.13 to go, and this is the third quarter. Kyle Hagna stepping in. The first one is missed. That is his first trip tonight. Two points on the evening. Big story, Weisenbeck has been held to three. Second one by Hagnes is no good. Rebound, Brutzel again. It's given off to Wilhelm across on the left side this time. Picked up by Jesse Claflin. Wilhelm. Holding on against Dreyer, gives off to Matt Lindy. Marcus gets it back, comes near side to Coppinger. He drives toward the lane, back to Wilhelm. Marcus to Coppinger, wide open, does not go, steps toward the lane. Before he can get there, a foul called on Hagnes. Kyle Hagnes picks up number two. The 15th foul on the Panthers. Avery has six already in this third quarter. Wilhelm will throw it in from the big line. Goes to Brooks on their side out on top. Coppinger looks at, oh, Wilhelm stepped out of there, held in by Wilhelm, and he comes from out of bounds after Fredrickson trying to get it back. It'll be Panther basketball. So, good pass. They just weren't, uh, you know, completely looked away and were going the wrong way when the ball came to them. And as we mentioned that, Hagnes brings it across after the inbound pass. Goes out on top to Wise, back far side to Claflin. Looking in. Nobody there at all. Out on top to go to Hagnes. Almost blocked with the basketball. Comes to the near side. Weisenbeck. Down low. Dreyer tries a shot. No good. Rebound. Picked away by Brutzel. He lost control. A scramble for it on the floor. A jump ball call between Dreyer 
and Wilhelm. And let's see who gets possession here. It'll be Amory's basketball. The Panthers headed to begin the quarter. Maya Fredrickson throws it into Matt Lindy. It is 40 to 26. Amory by 14, leading Duran. Wilhelm comes near side to Maya Fredrickson. Back to Wilhelm. Marcus holds on, drives in towards Dreyer. Needs help, bounce pass to Grotzel. Near side, Fredrickson up and on the baseline. Shot put up, missed rebound. Fought for and loose and pulled away by Weisenbeck. Even off to Kyle Hagnes. He'll challenge the defense and brings it across, going to the left side. Bounce pass to Cleflin on the far side. And the ball tipped by Wilhelm. Race work. He gets down there, tries a shot. No good, but a foul on Kyle Hagnes. And Wilhelm will be going to the line shooting two. Good hustle that time by Marcus to get that tip and then beat him to the ball down the floor and still try to get the shot out of it. He's a little faster this year, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a little faster and a little quicker. Nice defensive play by Marcus Wilhelm. And I don't know how many have the opportunity to uh, read the uh, Eau Claire leader telegram, but uh, Coach Steve Wilhelm featured, uh, I believe it was in the Tuesday edition, and uh, Wilhelm making the first one, by the way, Marcus at the free throw line. They had a picture of uh, Steve Wilhelm when he graduated in 1970, and at that point he was the uh, uh, the state's second leading all-time scorer in high school boys basketball history. And of course he went on to Madison with a scholarship, played for the Badgers for four years. And I'll pick up the story momentarily here, but as uh, I was talking, the Panthers drove down the floor, and uh, somebody, it was Dreyer, who moved all the way into the lane, tried the shot, it was no good, but did draw the foul, and he will go to the line shooting a couple. Close on Kate Brutzel that time. Brutzel picking up number two. So Dreyer will go step in, and Richardson is back in there now for the Duran Panthers with 2.39 to go in the third quarter. Free throw on the way is good by Dreyer. So the driver is three out of three, and those are his points in the contest. The second one is on the way. This one called good rebound easily to Brutzel. Amory's basketball, 41-27 the score. Amory by 14. Wilhelm on the near side. Goes out on top to Lindy, back to Marcus on the left side. He steps into a trap. Almost lost control. Whips her out to Coppinger. Right side to Lindy. Far corner. Goes inside. Brooks along the baseline. Try the shot. He's called for traveling. As number 50, Dennis Smith will be coming back in for the Panthers. And let's see who's going to get a rest here. Dave Hall, the 6'3 sophomore. 2.21 to go in the third quarter. Inbound pass to Wisen, back to Richardson on the middle end of the front court. Near side. Almost went through a trap. Gives off to Weisenbeck. Jason. Coming inside, Jamie Richardson. Pull up, baseline, jump shot, no good rebound. Tipped out to Lindy. Lindy will come across on the right side for the Amory Warriors. Picked up by Claflin. Out on top, they go to Wilhelm. Alley oops down low for Coppinger. He comes near side for Fredericks and tries a shot, no good, but a foul called on Dreyer. Well, the referee, <laughs> the referee called Dreyer and some dangerous play by D Jamie Richardson down low. Dreyer picks up the number one. Maya Fredrickson will step to the line. He is two out of two. Those are his points on the evening. 41-27, Amory by 14 with a minute 57 to go third quarter. And the free throw hit the back, bounced to the front, rolled around and fell through. So Fredrickson now with three points, all from the free throw line. Second one on the way, as good as well. And now coming in back into the ball game, Arno Lamb, the six foot three junior. Breyer will get a rest. And the Panthers will have to take the length here. Lamb will throw it in. Hands off to Weisenbeck. The trap put on by Lindy and Fredrickson. He whipped it to Smith across into the front court. Almost taken away. Out on top they go. Pass down low. Lamb there trying to shot partially blocked. Taken away on the rebound by Brutzel. Avery back on offense. Into the front court. Lindy near side to Wilhelm. Slow rolling basketball picked up by Wilhelm. They call him for traveling. And it'll be Duran basketball. A minute 38 to go third quarter. Arnold Lamb will throw it in from the near side. And it goes to Weisenbeck on the run into the front court. Challenging Brutzel steps in the lane, pulls up the shot blocked by Brutzel, tipped into the hands of Wilhelm. Nice defensive play by Gabe Brutzel. He's done it all tonight. 
The Amory Warriors into the front court. Lindy gets it down the far corner. Uh, Kopikas tries a shot from there. No good rebound. Richardson given off to Weisenbeck. Jason against Matt Lindy with the dribble drive into the front court left side. Still with the ball. Now gives off to Claflin. He drives around the defense. Got caught in the trap. Made some up. Gives off to Lamb. Right side to go. Richardson across the lane to Claflin. Picked up by Coppinger. Down the baseline it goes. He gets tied up with a foul called on Coppinger. So Matt will pick up foul number three. It'll stop the clock with 59.8 seconds to go on the Pepsi scoreboard. That, is not, that much time remains. Mr. Lindy got the ball. <laughs> that much time remains <laughs> in the third quarter. And let me make the correction. No foul on Matt Coppinger. Matt Lindy called for the fourth time. And the shot from the free throw line. No good rebound. Smith pulls it away. Tries a shot. Good by Dennis Smith. His first points in the ball game. So the Embry Warriors bring it down. Matt Lindy had an avenue down the lane. Took it down to the hoop as he gets there. They close in on him. Richardson and Weisenbeck do. And they call Liddy for the foul. And that would be his fifth. He's out of the ball game. 47.7 seconds to go. In the third quarter, and Matt Lindy fouls out of the ball game. The Panthers into the front court. And Richardson drives around on the baseline. I was just thinking, wow, how much room is there down there? They call it for stepping on the baseline. So a tough break for the Panthers. Amory gets it back at 36.7. And if we hit here now, if we close up the quarter and score, that uh, could put the icing on this kick. Wilhelm across, gives off the Coppinger, picked up by Richardson. On top to Meyer Fredrickson, 25 seconds. He dribbles around Lamb. Holding on, Al Hoops to Boto. They're way out near the timeline. Wises and Beck on Boto, right in the, out, in the middle circle. Whips it to Coppinger, far side, guarded by Richardson. 12 seconds to go, drives in the lane, tries to shut out off the glass, no good rebound. And pulled away by Claflin. He'll give off to Weisenbeck, four seconds to go. At half court into the front court, tip by Brozo, picked up by Richardson, and tries it for three, no good. And our third quarter score, Amory 43. The Panthers, 29, back in one thing's bill. I said, I know it all, and, you know, one thing led to another, and I ended up not joining. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of the cameraman extraordinary, too. He just came out here. He's got all these talents out there. He can just run the camera. He can do anything. Definitely so. All right, we're underway here in the fourth quarter. Richardson gets it down low. Out to Hagnitz, inside the Lamb, right side. Richardson down the baseline. He comes, puts it up good. This guy can play basketball. Ten points now for Richardson. It is 43-31. Amory with the 12-point lead. The Warriors bring it across. Coppinger gives off to Wilhelm, high on the left side. Hagnitz taking a look. Or check, yeah, Hagnitz, right side to go to Fredrickson to get her back in the ring for fouls. Looking at Coppinger in the lane, back up to Fredrickson, left side to Wilhelm. Mark is holding out of the basketball. Started close to the by Hagnes, needs help on top. Fredrickson, right side, Coppinger. Matt with the basketball, drives down to the baseline. Got by Richardson, lays it up to the right hand. It's good. Big basket by Coppinger. 45 to 31. Amory back to a 14 point lead as Richardson brings it across on the near side. Bounce pass into lane to Smith. He'll have to come out of there to Hagnes. He drives in. Triple team. Gives off down low. Here's Lamb. He's fouled. He fired it. He got there, but he got half good. No two points, but he'll get a try at the free throw line. I hope, I hope he does it as well as he did last time at the free throw line. Brozo is the man who picks up foul number three on that play. And Arnold Lamb stepping in, two points on the evening. The first one is on the way, this one is good. That's a whole different man shooting this time here. That was a nice shot, right straight through. He hits from the free throw line for the first time tonight. Second one is good as well, so he makes them both. And now he brings basketball with the 12-point lead, 45-33. By Fredrickson, whip her into the front court to Gabriel Brusso. Near side to get her on the baseline, guarded by Smith. He makes a move around and cannot get there. Well, he tried that the shot was good. It will not count, but Smith commits the foul. That would be number three on Dennis Smith. So Gitter will step to the line. He'll be shooting one and one. 
sat out about half of that third quarter, six points on the evening. Fits were on the way by Jake is no good. Rebound pulled away by Lamb. Given off to Hagnes into the front court. Went recklessly into the lane. Stripped of the basketball. Picked up by Fredrickson. Given off to Wilhelm into the front court. To Rocho. To Marcus. Left side of the key. Right side to go to Fredrickson. He had the ball tipped into the corner. Is chased down by Ginter. Goes to Rocho by himself. One and eighth. And Gabe puts it up for two. Give him 15 points. Nice passing that time. Definitely so. 47-33. Amory back to a 14-point lead. Richardson across. Goes to Hagnes. Right at high on the right side. Guarded by Wilhelm, given off to Smith. Left side to go to Claflin. Gets by the defense, steps down low, tries the baseline, shot good. What a move by Jesse Claflin. Absolutely, just, just an excellent job of getting up there and getting the shot off and went right straight through. Give him eight points, 47-35. Amherst lead cut to 12. Brozo gets a pass in the lane from Coppinger on the far side and coming out to try to take it away as Smith. And Dennis commits foul number four. Dave Rosa will go to the line as Scott the House Jensen will come back in and Jake Ginter is going to get a rest. Dave Hall will come back in and Dennis Smith will get a rest. 47-35, Amory by 12. Rosa with 15 points and a chance to add to it. He had 20 against Porter. The free throw is on the way. It is good. Hit the front, bounced to the back, rolled around and went through. 16 points for Gabe Bozzo. 5.48 to go in the contest. The second one by Bozzo is good again. Give him 17. 49-35. Amory back to a 14-point lead. Hagnes brings it across, gives off to Richardson. A quick pass inside and back out to Hagnes. Jump shot from the near side. Good by Kyle Hagnes. Give him four. 49-37, Amory's lead, cut to 12. Coppinger challenges the defense, brings him down the right side, pulls up, gives off to Fredrickson in the corner, three-point attempt on the way, no good rebound, Hagnes. The Panthers with the basketball. Kyle will race across on the near side, trying to go down low, the ball taken away by Fredrickson, he walks with the basketball. Well, nice interception, but uh, a little mix-up on trying to get going. Traveling called, and the basketball goes back to the Panthers. So here's a chance now with a score 49-37 for them to make it maybe a 10-point game. Inbound pass Richardson. Out on top, Claflin. Near side, Richardson. Out on top to Hagnes. Weisenbeck on the bench. Left side to go to Claflin. Three-point attempt on the way. Good by Claflin from the far side. And now it's a nine-point contest. That was a three-pointer from pro territory. Definitely so. That was a nice shot. That was the nicest shot of the evening. As we mentioned, that Amory brings it across. Marcus Wilhelm goes out on top to Brooks. Brooks gets it back on the far side, guarded by Hagnes to Fredrickson. Get off to Marcus on the far side with 4.44 to go. 49-40, Emory by nine. On top to go to Fredrickson. One dribble, pulls up, bounce pass into Brooks. He'll try the shot off the glass. Good. Gabe Brooks comes through again. 19 points for Brooks and Emory back to an 11 point lead. Well, the Panthers bring it across. They go left side to Claflin. Claflin, double team, comes near side to Haggis, down low to Richardson, near corner. Bounce pass, trying to go underneath. The ball is kicked and will be out of bounds to the Panthers on the baseline as he tried to go to Dave Hall. I don't understand that pass at all. That's called trying to force it into the basket. Mike Johansson checking in for the first time tonight for the Amory Warriors. Number 42, inbound pass goes to Richardson, near side, near the quarter, out on top, he threw it away. It'll be over and back for the Panthers. Well, he wanted to go to Hall, and way too high for the six foot three sophomore, and Amory will have it from across the way. Mike Johansson will throw it in. 51-40, an 11 point lead for the Amory Warriors. Inbound pass goes to Wilhelm. Marcus with the basketball, guarded closely by Hagnes. Now he lets us go. With the dribble on the right side, goes into the circle, gives off to Johansson, left of the key. Mike one dribble back to Wilhelm. Now in the lane to Brutzo. He gives off to Johansson, near side. Mike to the top, the key right side, to go to Wilhelm. Marcus with the basketball, guarded closely by Hagnes. Now Marcus backs up, 
McLean on the right side goes to Brutzel, trying to get loose down low, has stripped of the basketball, picked up by Wilhelm, gives up to Johansson. He goes back to Wilhelm right side. Marcus will start it again with 3.30 to go. To Johansson, bounce pass to the big guy. Underneath to go to Brutzel. Brutzel missed an easy one, rebound to Claflin, given off to Hagnes. Kyle brings it across to Durand on the near side. To Jamie Richardson across to the free throw line. Shot put up by Hall. No good. Richardson with a rebound. Shot blocked. And the ball taken away by Wilhelm. Beautiful defensive play by Marcus Wilhelm. As the Warriors bring it across. Wilhelm with the dribble on the near side. Goes it by Hagnes. On top to go to Johansson. Johansson hangs on. Goes around. Now threw it away into the hands of Hagnes. And Brooks are trying to get it back. Commits a foul. Gabe picks up number four. 51-40, an 11-point game for the Amory Warriors. 2.55 to go. Well, Hagnes will step in. It's going to be interesting if we go on the, the, uh, the wire here. We're just under three minutes to go now. At the uh, free throw shooting is going to be all important at this point. Well, the Panthers would love to live there for two minutes and 55 seconds. Brooks comes out and gets a well-deserved hand as Ginter steps in. I should say Ginter comes back in. Hagner steps in. Here's the free throw. It is no good. Rebound. Ginter chased it down on the near side. Avery's basketball with the 11-point lead as Conger will take it across on the right side. Goes down to the baseline. Got loose. Pull-up jump shot. No good, but a foul called on number 40. That is Dave Hall. That'll be number four on the six foot three sophomore. So now the referee, the referee, uh, I don't know, he, he can lay off nobody here now. <laughs> Not saying that he was, but. Lots of people playing out there with four falls. Coppinger at the line, his free throw, a high arching shot is no good. So Matt. With seven points, does not hit on the front end. He's one out of four tonight. The second one is good, so he's two out of five. Give him eight points. And now it's 52-40. Amory back to a 12-point lead. Kyle Hagnes brings it across. Almost lost it. Comes near side Richardson. Jamie looking inside at Hall. Back out on top. They throw it away again. Well, Hagnes moved out of there. And Jamie Richardson on the near side. Once again, threw it out on top, and they lose the basketball. Coppinger after the inbound pass, brings it to cross, goes all the way down the lane, drives it off the glass, and good, as Coppinger caught the Panthers sleeping, and Avery now leads it 54-40. The Panthers down quickly. Richardson goes in the lane and gives off to Hall, and check that to Lamb, and Lamb takes it in for a two. Nice play by the Panthers, so they come right back with a... A good play inside, and it's 54-42. And as I mentioned, that Hall takes one away in the front court. A steal by the Panthers, and here comes Hagnes into the front court for Duran. Goes to Claflin high on the left side, guarded by Coppinger. Tried to go across the lane to the near side to Richardson, picked away by Ginter, who went high in the air for the steal. Given off to Wilhelm. Marcus across on the near side for the Avery Warriors, goes to Coppinger. Matt with the basketball to the house back in there on top. Now to Ginter. Ginter left to the key. Clapton all over him. A handoff coming. It's tipped by Clapton. Picked up by Wilhelm. A timeout called on the floor. Avery leads at 54-42. A minute 31 to go. We're back. In. Welcome back once again, everyone. Bill Hag along with Ray Orsted, Mike Jensen from Avery. Fredrickson will throw it in after the timeout. And a technical now called on the Panthers. And uh, apparently, uh, uh, number 44, Lamb, must have touched. Uh, who was throwing it in? Was it Brochel? I'm not sure. I can't remember. But uh, technical right down here in front of the bench. And somebody for Amory is going to go over the free throw line. It's going to be the big guy, Scott the House Jensen. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's not going to happen. I don't know. Make all the ball, and then he, then he took it away. Maybe the timeout wasn't over with it. I don't know. Maybe one referee wasn't ready. We'll leave it alone. Inbound pass. Fredrickson calls. No, five seconds called. So there's a turnover. Fredrickson cannot get it in. Tried to call timeout. And there's a good lesson for Amesbury in still what is somewhat the early stages of this season. Inbound pass goes to Richardson. In the lane. Lamb tries one. No, no good. Rebound tipped around by Hall. And Hall puts it through. Give him four. 
It's now 54-44, 10-point game with a minute 19 to go. And as Jensen tries to bring it down, Jesse Claflin steps in there and puts a hand in, trying to take the ball away and commit the foul. So Jesse picks up foul number one as we see it from here. So he wants to send the big guy to the line. He'll be shooting one and one, six points on the evening. 54 to 44, aim it by 10, a minute and 17 to go. The free throw by Jensen is good. Nice shot for the big guy, give him seven. Absolutely, that's the, the touch you like to see at the line for a big man. Just up there and put him right through. Scott taking his time. Second one on the way is good as well. Two perfect free throws by big guy. And it's now 56-44, aim by 12. Richardson down quickly for Duran. Out on top, Hagnes lets the defense go by, gets it back to Richardson. He'll try for three near corner. It is no good. Rebound fought for Bristol and Hall, and they jump for it. A minute four to go in the contest. It'll be Amory's basketball. Scott, the house, Jensen will throw it in from the baseline. It goes to Brutzel. Gabe Brutzel with the basketball to Jensen. He pulls up on the dribble, comes back to Brutzel across on the other side to Wilhelm. Clavlin all over him. Gives off to the house. Back to Marcus. A trap put on there. He dribbles or tries to dribble out of there, but a call on Richardson, and he's out of the ball game. Jamie Richardson, the six foot three senior, picks up number five. He will leave the game with 10 points and falls out with 48.2 seconds to go. And I don't think he'll be the last one to go to the bench with five. Well, Marcus will step in nine points on the evening. Six from the free throw line. Make it seven. So give him 10 now. Seven from the free throw line. He had a three-pointer earlier. The second one is on the way good as well. So two leg points for Marcus Wilhelm. Give him 11 points out. And it's 58-44. Amory by 14. The Panthers into the front court. Weisenbeck back in and drives down to the baseline. They let him go. And Weisenbeck gets the two points. Five on the evening. And now timeout calls. 58-46. to 46. Amory by 12. As they talk things over, let's go back for a second. 35.4 seconds to go in contest. Amory with a 12-point lead. The Hayward Hurricanes will be here Tuesday night. Scott the House Jensen will throw it in from the baseline to get things rolling. It'll be a football toss to Coppinger, tipped by Clavlin, picked up by Lamb. Two wise and back into the front court. He runs into Brutzel, and uh, the game will be called for a foul out on the left side. Well, a good play by the, the Durant Panthers, and Brutzel will be coming out there as he picks up number five. He will leave the game with 19 points, so another fine evening from Gabe Brutzel. He falls out with 29.9 seconds to go. Weisbeck will step to the line. It's 15 against Boyceville Tuesday night. Five points tonight. They make it six. He hits the front end of a one and one. It's now 50-47 with Emory by 11. Why is he back to try it again? The shot is no good in the house. Comes down with a rebound, and he's called for traveling before he can get out of there. So with 27.7 seconds to go, and Avery leading by 11, the Panthers will have it from under their own hoop. Claflin will throw it in. Comes to his side to Lamb. On top to Agnes. Drives in the lane. Jumps out off the glass. No good rebound. Who's got it? Weisenbeck. Picks it up off the floor, cannot handle it, and a foul call. <laughs> It'll be one and one. I'm not sure which way we're going here. Number 55. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Let's take a look here. Yes. 5 0. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah, those glasses. You got it, you got it in Cambridge, right? <laughs> <laughs> By a fraction call for number four. Weisenbeck at the line puts it through. Give him seven points now. And a chance to make it eight. The free throw is good. So now it is 58-49. Cameron's lead cut to nine. 
Long pass to Ginter in the backcourt from Jensen to Wilhelm. 15 seconds to go. And they chase him down. He's trying to split the defense, but a jump ball called, and the Panthers will have possession. Well, a little body checking going on there, but uh, the referee really was in no position to see it. Inbound pass goes to Weisenbeck. Long three-point attempt, no good. Rebound, Ginter. Alley oops, near side, Fredrickson. And after him, ball tipped out of bounds. It'll be Amory's basketball and right down in front with one point seconds to go. And who gets to shoot the shot? I don't think anybody's going to. We're going to be here. It'll go far side to Ginter. Here comes a three-point attempt. It is no good. Partially blocked this game is history. The Avery Warriors stand off the Durand Panthers. Final, Avery 58. The Panthers 49. And we will have an elongated post-game show. We're going to be talking with Rick.